So I think part of what I'm hoping we'll be talking about is what are, what's the role of art therapists and music therapists and what are the role of artists and how do they come together and, and how can they come together and work together. A therapist's goal in physical rehabilitation is community reintegration. We often have, with our, especially with our adults, we tend to see over uh, older adults that they're, they get so sort of entrenched in their therapy, um, outpatient particularly, because the inpatient stays are, even in rehab, are, are you know, very short, relatively. Um, but then they can have a certain number of sessions for outpatient physical therapy, let's say. And then what we hear, my department hears again and again, is so they're physically at a certain point, but they're really not socially or emotionally back in their lives. So one of our goals with the outpatient program is how can we help these people bridge, you know, Rusk and MoMA, Rusk and the Rubin Museum, Rusk and the Creative Center. A number of people who have come to the Creative Center workshops now come here. And these are people who have had strokes, traumatic brain injuries, cancer, um, you know, the, the, a range. And therapists usually are present but they're not there for any other purpose really than to assist and potentially you know, facilitate if as needed. But really generally, it's run by the artist. You know, from a therapist's perspective, the community reintegration is a therapy goal. How can we work with patients through whatever modality it is, recreation therapy, art therapy, to help them get back into their lives in a quality manner. But in this case, or not even but, but in this case, it's the artist that's facilitating that. The artist doesn't have that goal. We're not necessarily, you know, talking even to the patient sometimes about that goal, but it's an outcome. And the reason I guess I keep bringing this up in terms of a therapist's goal and how an artist might facilitate it is because there's often a lot of conflict bet between artists and therapists between why is the artist there and why is the therapist there. And there's, you know, sort of a, sometimes a judgment, you know, of, you know, well, the therapist always, you know, has a reason. You know, they're going for something. You have to do something. And the artist is just there, you know, for the pleasure, <coughs> the relax, you know, whatever it is. But I don't, I don't think it's even close to as simple as that. And this is our art therapist on our pediatric um, acute care unit. I can share with you that one of the advantages I find in working in collaboration with artists is that it enriches the patient's technique. And although specifically for art therapy you're not looking into technique and or product, it does help to communicate better your idea or emotion if you are able to make it more representative. For the therapist also to understand better if what the patient is doing is related to the emotional component or the lack of understanding with the technique. So she's talking about you know, the sort of intimidation that a lot of patients feel, children and adults, um, at the use of an art modality. Oh, I can't, I can't sing, or I can't play that, or I can't draw. Um, and even though in a therapeutic relationship, or when you're in as artists, you know, you're presenting it in as non-threatening a way as you possibly can. But from her perspective, sometimes she does, it's hard to know whether they're not using the modality because they feel intimidated by the modality, or they're just not ready to go there. Um, you know, I think part of what's so powerful about the modalities in a therapeutic context, and I mean now under therapy, is that, you know, you don't even always know what you're expressing. Um, and that's, you know, the role of the therapist is then to contain that. Um, and sometimes to then facilitate it going further, but sometimes not, quite honestly, when we have patients that are there for less than a week, we're not opening up a box with these people. It's not fair. You know, it's not, it wouldn't be right. So sometimes it's an introduction, uh, but sometimes it's using, like with children in particular, we're learning their understanding of what's happening to them. You know, because they, if they can't verbalize it, it, it will come up in their play. It'll come up in the songwriting, the song choices. And that's, so a music therapist is thinking about the choices of songs that people are making. You, as a singer, you might go into a room and say, you know, here's the, the decades that I cover, choose. And then you're not going to think, oh, you know, this person chose this song, that song, that song. 
you're not necessarily going to be thinking about that, and, and nor do you have to. Um, whereas a music therapist, over time, may start to look at those patterns of the songs people choose, or even maybe suggest them. But so, a lot of times, it's eliciting from the patient and then working with them by what the therapist is learning, by what they chose, the choices they made. The communication um, between the therapists and the artist becomes so important because we also don't want the artist sort of in a situation where something comes up that they don't know what to do with or they don't know where to go with it or how to close it. Um, and that can happen when you're doing jewelry. It doesn't necessarily matter that you're working on something that's so self-contained. Um, it can, people are going to feel relaxed, they're going to feel comfortable, and they're going to open up. And um, I think that's another reason why I think it's really important that the therapists and the artists are working collaboratively and closely together. I think it supports both of them uh, in a really wonderful way. Um, but it also acknowledges that from the patient's perspective, you know, we're, all of us are providing them something that we're hoping is helping in their healing. I think sometimes then the therapist can sort of get demonized, you know what I mean? I, and I hear that, I don't know if you're all on the SA message uh, boards, but sometimes there are discussions about, you know, sort of the therapists being sort of the doom and gloom, you know, going in there with a the job to do, whereas the artist is sort of free as a bird. And it's, you know, the therapist is going in there, our, our, our therapists are playing Scrabble. If that's where the kid is or the adult is, they'll play Scrabble. You know, they're not gonna force anything. And that they may be going in with the same kinds of materials, a range of materials, to explore with the patient the same way. You know, so a lot of it can look the same. Um, it's really all about the communication. So from social work or nursing or whoever's on the unit who meets someone before or after or whatever shares. And that's, I, I, it's unfortunate when it doesn't happen. I mean, I guess, you know, in, in ending, uh, and I have my card, um, I just, I think you should be who you are. You know, you don't be pressured to try to fit into some mode that you're not. And I mean, like, in, I think there's a lot of pressure to sort of medicalize art in hospitals because there's a lot of pressure between funding and insurance and what's going on there. And I think that can be very frustrating um, for an artist. And you might feel like you have to call yourself something different so that you sound more legitimate. But I would, I would discourage you from doing that because I think if, you're, if you find the right place and you connect with the right people, your work and yourself as an artist is going to be appreciated for what it is. And that's what the most that you can do for who you are. You know, uh, otherwise, you're diminishing the role of an artist in a hospital, uh, which is an important place. It's an important role. Um, so... I would say that from a therapy department's perspective, um, you know, to hold on to who you are um, because it's important.